General. Hi, Carrie. It's Hissel. Are you sick about hearing about climate change, the end of the American energy revolution? Well, don't believe the hype. Believe in our entrepreneurship. I've got Manhattan Institute senior fellow Robert Bryce. He's the author of a new book, uh, Smaller, Faster, Lighter, That's or Cheaper. Uh, Robert, why do we always underestimate the power of American entrepreneurship? Wow. Because <laughs> we know, do, right? We do, of course. And it's particularly under, underestimated when it comes to the energy field. There's this bias that somehow all innovation is going to happen in solar panels, wind turbines, etc., forgetting that the U.S. alone is now spending on the order of $300 billion a year on its own just drilling oil and gas wells. We have 6,000 oil and gas, independent oil and gas companies in the U.S., all of whom are motivated to do things smaller, faster, lighter, denser, cheaper, because if they don't, they go out of business. It's not only smaller, faster, lighter, denser, cheaper. It's also more environmentally friendly, isn't it, Robert? Sure. And that's one of the things that I, I write about in the book. There's this bias, again, that, oh, wind turbines are, are green. No, absolutely wrong. Wind turbines are the antithesis of green, as are biofuels. Why? Because they take up too much land. We want small footprints. Density is green. Small footprints are green. And the oil and gas industry, like the nuclear industry, has a very small footprint relative to the amount of energy and power they're able to provide. What about fracking? Environmentally friendly? Absolutely. Innovative. Best example of American uh, energy entrepreneurship? Well, it is, it is clearly one of these areas where the, the industry is getting better and better at it and able to produce more and more oil and gas from even one well bore. And every time they're doing it, they're learning more and they're spreading this knowledge throughout the industry. So, yes, it's absolutely environmentally friendly. Now, there's always a threat to all of this great news, and it's called the regulatory state and Congress. Uh, how much of a threat is, say, an EPA uh, to stopping or at least slowing of the kind of energy renaissance that you write about? Well, I think particularly when you look at the EPA and their rules regarding coal here in the United States, I'm adamantly pro-natural gas, but I'm also adamantly in favor of a diverse energy portfolio. The U.S. is at the Saudi Arabia coal. We're the entire OPEC of coal. And for the U.S. to forswear the use of coal going forward, I think would be a tremendous uh, mistake economically and strategically. What about the regulatory mandates that we have, for example, uh, ethanol and other things? Does that impede entrepreneurship? Or do you think that, you know, the guy, the, the, the inventor sitting in Texas just says, ah, forget that. Uh, I'm not going to feed this government mandate. I'm going to figure out a way around it. Well, there's no question that the corn ethanol scam, <laughs> and, and it is a scam, and it has been ongoing now for decades, has been, in fact, a, a boondoggle of the first order. And when you look at that fuel based on, on its energy density, on the fact that it's hydrophilic, uh, that it's corrosive, this is not the fuel of the future. It's the fuel of the past. And, and uh, biofuels in general are just a bad idea. I see you have something here on the desk. What, what is well, it? I, yeah, the, well, this is, I think, one of the prime examples of smaller, faster, lighter, denser, cheaper. It's an iPod Nano. I just bought it the other day. It holds as much music as 300 LPs. On, on a music terms basis, this is, has 2,000 times as much music by weight as an LP and 6,000 times more by volume than an LP. It's just a, a prime example of this innovation and, and entrepreneurship and what it means. Well, finally, a good news story. Wonderful news. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.